In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a, a hierarchical schematic in LTSpice. Um, the first thing to do is to launch LTSpice, and we're going to be creating um, a hierarchical schematic for our double inverter buffer example. So the first thing to do is to create a schematic for uh, one of the inverters. So we're going to uh, instance a couple of four terminal transistors one PMOS and one NMOS and arrange them and then we're going to configure them. So we're going to first of all change the model name to C5N PMOS. We're going to make the length 0 0.6 microns and the width 1.8 microns. So that's a 2 lambda long channel and a 6 lambda wide uh, channel. That's going to match up with the layout that we will wind up doing. And we'll do the same thing for the NMOS. So we're going to call it C5N NMOS. And again, we're going to make these 0 0.6 microns, length 1.8 microns, width. And now what we're going to do is connect these up with wires. So our drain-to-drain -drain connection and our place for the output to come. Gate-to-gate -gate connection. There's our input. And now we have to connect the source up to the bulk. And there's where our positive power supply connection is going to be. And connect the source to the bulk negative power supply. Okay, so now what we're going to do is put some net labels in here, and these will correspond to pin names um, in our higher level schematic, and when we make a, a symbol to correspond to this schematic. So we're going to call uh, the input V in, put that here, call the output V out, Call the positive supply V pause, and we'll call the negative supply V neg. Okay, and we'll save this as um, an inverter Let's see, put it here. Call it inverter. So now we have a schematic for our inverter. Now we want to create a symbol to go along with this. So we go file new symbol. And now we have to draw the symbol using the tools in the draw menu. So it'll be lines and circles and things like that. So um, I'm going to just draw a simple inverter logic symbol. I tend to be a little bit pedantic about these things, so it may take me a little bit longer than it needs to. I apologize. And then... And it's going to drive me crazy that this point is off that grid. Okay. Now we're going to draw some lines. Connections. Leave room for that bubble. And we're also actually going to need some lines for power supply connections, like you might see on an op amp symbol. Normally, you wouldn't see that in a logic circuit diagram, but since we're actually concerned with the power supply connections in this particular case, I'm going to include them. So I'm going to make my bubble over here and then move it into place. Come on. All right. 
So now we have the basic symbol, and what we need to do is add pins. So we go up to the edit menu and add pin port. So the, the label for the pin has to correspond to a net label in the schematic that is represented by the symbol. So we're going to call the input v in, just like we did in the inverter schematic. We're going to call the output v out. And we're going to call the pause to supply the pause. And the negative supply the neg. Okay, so I noticed that my line for the positive supply was off by one grid point. So I'm going to fix it. So I need to move this down by one. We can move our pin connection back over there and it's good. Okay, so there's one more thing we need to do and that's we need to go up here to the edit attributes dialog and we need to change the symbol type from block to cell. So a block is like a spice primitive symbol like a MOSFET or something like that. So this, by changing it to cell, that tells LT Spice that there will be a schematic that corresponds to the symbol that has the same name and whatnot. So we're going to click on OK here, and then we're going to save this as inverter.asy. So now we have a symbol for our inverter and a schematic. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a uh, higher level schematic called buffer. So we got a new schematic and we're going to instance two of our inverter symbols. So to get to those symbols, what we do is we pop up here and change to the working directory and find our inverter symbol. And we can put two of those down with the output of one connected to the input of the other. And we're going to connect the positive power supplies together. And we're going to connect the negative supplies together. And then we're going to label terminals here. So let's call the input to the whole thing in. We'll call the output out. And we'll call the positive rail pause and the negative rail neg. Okay, so we're going to save this as buffer. And now we're going to create a symbol that corresponds to this schematic. So we're going to create a new symbol. Actually, let's take advantage of our existing symbol for the inverter and edit it into a buffer symbol. So what we're going to do is save this symbol as buffer. And then we can do things like delete the bubble and then move that output to connect to the output there, and we can change the names of these things. So pause, neg, out, and in. We can save that. Okay, so now we have our double inverter buffer schematic and symbol. We have an inverter schematic and symbol. And now we can make uh, sort of a top level schematic, which will have one buffer. And this could be a test harness if we're going to do some simulations. We'll get into that more next, probably next week, and then machine problem two. 
But it turns out that for LDS purposes, which is kind of our purpose right now, we need to do this in order to make um, the LVS tool happy because it is going to be looking for a subcircuit, and in order to make this buffer a subcircuit, we need to actually have a higher level uh, circuit schematic in which it's instanced. So this could correspond to our test harness where it has power supply connections and um, input supplies and things like that to stimulate the circuit. But in this case, it's going to be very simple. We're just going to label the inputs and outputs. So we're going to call this in, and call this out, pause and neg. We're going to save this as, let's say, buffer top. Now to actually see the netlist, we can go up to uh, view and pull down to view spice netlist. We can see here's the netlist that corresponds to our uh, hierarchical schematic. At the top level we have this, which is an instance of the buffer. X here denotes, in the first position, denotes a subcircuit instance. And buffer is defined in this little subcircuit definition section. So a subcircuit buffer consisting of these input-output pins, and that in turn corresponds to an instance of inverter, another instance of inverter, and you can see that the input to the whole thing is the input to the inverter. We've got the positive and negative power supply propagated through here, and then it generates this net name P001 for the intermediate node between the two. And then down here is the actual subcircuit definition for the inverter. You can see it consists of two transistors, an NMOS transistor and a PMOS transistor, that are length and width that we specified. Okay, so normally LT Spice will delete these net files because they're sort of intermediate files and you don't normally need them to stick around cluttering up your directory, but in our case we're going to actually need this Spice net list for our um, LVS tool to be a to be able to compare it with the one extracted from layout. And so we're going to need to um, ask LT Spice not to delete those. And you can do that by going up to the Tools menu, pull down the Control Panel, and under Operation, you'll find here Automatically Delete.NET Files. And this is normally Yes, and I've already set it to No. And so once you do that, it should remember that setting, but that's where you find it. Um, under the Operations tab in the Control Panel dialog. Okay, so that is our that is our hierarchical schematic. Um, when you simulate hierarchical schematics, you can actually use the Voltage Probe tool and actually propagate your way down through the lower level schematics and probe nodes on the in the subcircuits, which is really cool. Um, and I'll show you more about that in a different video when we actually uh, get to doing simulations um, next time. That's it for this one.